Okay, Mongoose Jake here with a unboxing of, as you can see, one of the remaining Sonic Ice blasters that are still on the market. Um, Toys R Us now, for now, is one of the only places that you can still buy Sonic Ice blasters. Of course, Sonic Ice being the see-through blue plastic, and the Retaliator, the uh, Magnus, and... I think they still had a Sonic Ice Rampage, which I was very, very tempted to get. But I wanted to do a Retaliator build. Uh, I'm guilty of giving the Retaliator some grief because of the fact that it's not as competitive anymore with all the new Busby Blasters, all of them outperforming it at a lower price. But I, I still like my uh, Retaliator. Let me dig it out, actually. Got it in a bin right here below. This is my current retaliator. And it's bone stock, which I'm going to keep it. This one's going to stay stock because I want this as a test bed for, for comparison purposes. But this one, I'm going to set it off to the side here. But this one is going to get the full treatment with all kinds of goodies from worker. And I'm going to turn this into something that is respectable even outside of our own little neighborhood Nerf Wars. And I'm going to see if I can't make this thing uh, compete with my Interceptor, which is firing all the way up to 140 feet per second. We'll see. That'll be a whole different video. This video, I'm just going to get it out, and I will chrono it here and include it in. So this will be an unboxing and chronograph test. The weather's not so good outside, so that's why I'm in here in the workshop. But I will do both the unboxing and chronograph. So let's get to it. So there we are. I've got our Sonic Ice Retaliator. And I, for one, actually, I don't care for the foregrip. Never did. I just simply like, I like it like this right here. And I will be getting that sticker off. I mean, that's, man, that looks bad on the, on the Sonic Ice version. Ugh. Yeah. I have some goo gone, I'll take care of that. But, yeah, there it is. Now it's time to do some chronograph testing. Okay, here we are with the elites that it came with. Let's prime it back. And I'll see about getting a few good shots through here. And, I mean, we all can kind of reasonably expect what this will do. 72. Oh, there goes the dart. <laughs> Ooh, 62.4. Keep in mind, brand new darts. 70.4. 63.2. Now that's five shots. Let's take off the uh, attachment. 79.2 <laughs> A 
Okay, that's gonna be an error. I'm gonna throw in a couple more. I only had put uh, eight. Let's finish out. It came with twelve, so let's get the other four in there. Okay, so we had a few good shots. Now let's see if I can get that'll be five remaining without the uh, attachment on. 67.5, 71.4, that'll be an error, and of course I hit hit that, come on, we got one more, I've been doing so good, 72, okay, so the barrel attachment uh, went, went and made maybe a slight difference, but not too much of one, but there you go, some live live firing uh, that way because right now the weather's really bad outside um it rain off and on and a lot of wind so i wasn't going to do a live demonstration outside but we'll finish up and taking a look at this okay so quick finish up this is the sonic ice retaliator you've seen that it's shooting in the mid 60s touch uh, there was one kind of high fluke shot that went in the upper 70s but for the most part middle 60s to around 71 72 no surprise there that's pretty much what to expect out of all newer elite blasters they shoot mid 60s to just over 70 for an average as i average around 68 ish maybe 68 to 70 so you know round about what everybody knows um like i said no surprise there the uh whole basis of this is uh, and the reason why I want to do a chronograph test more than anything is I'm well aware that range tests are not ideal for precise data. And chronographs are. They give you exactly what you need to know. And especially if I save those exact same 12 darts, that eliminates one more variable. Which I've got them set aside. They're wrapped back up in the package. I even went ahead and put them back in. So... I will save those aside, and once the build's done, we're going to fire those exact same 12 back on through here. So, keep the variables to a minimum. But, what do I think of a stock retaliator? Which is what this is, just with a special uh, special shell to it. They're a fine blaster. Um, there's, there's better. If you're going to customize it, if you're going to modify it, I mean, it is very modular. I kind of think that the they're phasing it out slowly, especially the Sonic Ice. Um, but I mean, look, now it's a pistol, <laughs> or you can throw a stock on. Now it's kind of almost like a little carbine. Throw on the barrel, you got a rifle. So it's kind of it's neat. It's very modular, and with the aftermarket the parts out there, you know you can. You can make this be what you want it to be, and that is something. Even though I seem like a Busby sales rep half the time, this is something that Busby can't match. I have an aftermarket worker stock. I've got a stack of parts here. More parts. More parts. All this is going to go in there. And... These are parts that are made specifically for the Retaliator. It's not, it's not, oh, it can fit the Retaliator. No, no. This is a worker breach for the Retaliator specifically. This is a bolt, bolt action kit. Because I'm not going to do pump action. I have a pump action blaster that's already modified. My Busby Interceptor. It already shoots 130 to 140 feet per second. This is going to be 9 kilograms spring for it. I mean, this is a, this right here. I, I mean, I know I'm going kind of overboard here and it seems rambling, but this is a bolt sled for specifically the Retaliator. This isn't meant for, you know, five other blasters. Now, it should fit the um, Recon Mark II, I mean, because it's, they share so many similarities. But, I mean, this was built for the Retaliator. As much as I love Busby products, as far as I know, right now, nobody's building anything like this for, say, the Tactical Storm, the Monorail, the uh, Interceptor, the Thermal Hunter, or a very fantastic pistol that I haven't reviewed yet, but it's amazing. The Zenith. 
people aren't making anything for those. They are what you are, and you have to kind of custom do everything. Except for the fact that Busby was very wise, and the uh, spring kits for the spring kits here for um, retaliators fit all the new Busby products, or almost all of them. Uh, but all this is going to go in here. It's going to be a lengthy build. I will, I will actually film it and let you see what the final progress is. But to cut it short here, what do I think of a retaliator? bone stock. It's not the best, but it's extremely customizable. It's not the cheapest, but it is neat. It's it's a neat blaster. And that's kind of what it is. I mean, it's it's almost like a starting point. You buy a retaliator knowing you're going to pay a little more than say like a a Busby interceptor or a Busby tactical storm you're paying about in this case I paid a bit quite a bit more. Um I did get a good deal on uh, Toys R Us. This is right before the whole closing news. I bought it literally the, like the day before and I had a buy one get one half off. So I only paid about 20 for this because I bought it with my long shot and that was a good deal. But normally you can expect to pay about $30 for these and compared to say like a $16 Busby Tactical Storm. The Busby Tactical Storm outperforms its stock and the Busby Interceptor Thermal Hunter, same same blaster, different shells, different color. There's only a difference, really, in the attachments. But that outperforms the Retaliator. But none of those have all of this support for them to make them so customizable and to steal Nerf's own term, modular. Uh, everything, I mean... It's right now. It's a pistol. It's a magazine-fed pistol. Becomes a rifle. And with all these upgrades, you can do as much or as little to it as you want to do. And that's that's the beauty of Nerf overall, and specifically something like the Retaliator that's been out for so long. But this is Mongoose Jake with a bit longer unboxing, including a chronograph test. You've seen what this is performing stock. That's what you can expect any of the retaliators to perform like. My other retaliator, as I've tested it, also shoots in the upper 60s. It shoots about 68 to 69 average every time. And that's just what you expect. It's not a bad buy. It's not a good buy. It is what it is. It's not really, not really much of a review. To say it is what it is, but... That's truly all you can say about it. It's it's what you make of it. But this is Mungus Jake. I thank you for hanging out with me here in the workshop as I unbox and test out my Sonic Ice Retaliator. Hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please subscribe. And if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, let me know why. Or let me know if you're excited for the upcoming build. Just... Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below, and stay tuned if you want to see more of this. Mongoose Jake, signing out.